All right, today we're going to take a look at 6-3 linear functions. So our goal today is to write a linear function using a graph and a table and to uh, use a linear function in a real-world situation. All right, for your warm-ups, go ahead and write these lines in slope-intercept form. Hit pause. When you're done, go ahead and hit play. All right, so our first one, we have y equals 1 third x plus 2. Our second one, y equals negative x plus 7. Now, you'll notice each of these is, well, a straight line. Now, if I were to talk about this in function form, I would call this a linear function because it is a straight line. So a linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical line. A linear function can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b. Boy, we've been talking a lot about that lately. Where m is the slope and b, of course, is the y-intercept. So now let's figure out how to write a linear function that relates y to x. So when we say relates y to x, that means y is going to eat some, equal something. So we want it in slope-intercept form. Now, I don't have a line here, but what I do have are some points. So I can pick point 2, 0, 4, 3. Now remember, I can pick any points on that line that I want. I'm going to do x1, y1, x2, y2. Well, in order to have this equation, I need to know the slope. So remember that slope is change in y over change in x. So I have 3 minus 0 over 4 minus 2. So my slope here is 3 halves. Now, if I look right here, what do I have? Well, that's the y-intercept right there. So my y-intercept. Remember, that's where it crosses the y-axis, and here, that's 0, negative 3. So I know my slope, and I know my y-intercept, so my equation is y equals 3 halves x minus 3. Now, what I could have also done is found my y-intercept here, negative 3, and then found the slope, up 1, 2, 3, over 2. There's my three halves. So you can use it by doing rise over run or find your slope. For example, two here, how would we do this using a table? Well, again, we want a linear function that relates y to x. So we should have something as y equals. Now, again, I want to pick two points. So I'm going to do negative 2, 7, negative 3, 9. Why did I pick those two? Eh, because I can. <laughs> so I've got x1, y1, x2, y2. Now I could have picked any points in any order. I just liked those and why I picked them in that order. I don't really know. I don't like it. So again, change in y over change in x. So I have 9 minus 7 equals negative 3 minus negative 2. So I have 2 over negative 1. So I have a slope of negative 2. Now remember, y-intercept is when x equals 0. So my y-intercept here is 0, 3. So I have m is negative 2, b is 3. So I have y equals negative 2x, my slope, plus 3, my y-intercept. All right, uh, what I'd like for you to do now is do one and two on your own, hit pause, and then play when you are ready to check your work. All right, looking here at number one, y-axis, negative one. My slope is negative, so I've got down one over two, so I have negative one-half x minus one. Now, if you notice, look at here. So I automatically have y equals 2 no matter what x is, y is going to be 2. That was a little tricky. 
Taking a look at example three, you are controlling an unmanned aerial vehicle, Ooh, a UAV for surveillance. The table shows the height Y in thousands of feet of UAV X minutes after you start its descent from its cruising altitude. Write a linear function that relates Y to X. Interpret, that means, tell me what it means. Don't just say Y equals and slope equals. Explain it. The slope and the Y intercept. So if I'm going to pick two points, I'm going to do 0, 65, 10, 60, x1, y1, x2, y2. Slope is change in y over change in x. So I have 60 minus 65 over 10 minus 0. So I have negative 5 over 10 equals negative 1 half. And then, so I've got my slope right here. So my slope equals negative one half. And then my y intercept, remember that's when x is zero. So my y intercept is 65. So that means my equation is y equals negative one half x plus 65. But we need to interpret that, okay? So my slope is negative one half. Now, keep in mind, this is height in thousands of feet, okay? So if I were to take half of thousands of feet, that would be five tenths I know that sounds a bit confusing. We're talking about thousands of feet. So that means the height decreases 500 feet per minute. Remember, we're talking about thousands of feet and we are descending, so we're decreasing. Now, what does our slope mean? Again, thousands of feet. Okay, so this here is 65,000. So that means that our descent begins at. 65,000 feet. Okay. So let's graph this bugger. Now, remember, we talked about independent and dependent value, values. Our x is this right here. And our x is in minutes. That's time. And so this is height. But remember, it's in thousands of feet. So I could say 10,000, so I could say 10, 20, 30, 40. So my minutes, let's see, I've got 0, 10, 20, 30, um, let's see, 20, 40, 60, 80, 80, and then here I'm going to use 20, 40, 60, 80. Remember, this is thousands of feet, so that's 80,000. All right, so I've got my first, my zero, 65, 10, 60, 20, 55, 30 is 50. So I've got my linear function here, and let's graph it. Now, it is okay that mine kind of goes off here. That's all right. So... Now, find the height of the UAV when you stop the descent after one hour. Well, so should I replace X with one? No, X is in minutes. So, Y equals negative one-half 60 plus 65. 
y equals negative 30 plus 65. y equals 35. So that means the descent stops at 35,000 feet. All right, go ahead on your own. What if you double the rate of descent? So repeat steps A through C to come up. Hit pause and come back when you're finished. All right, so we have y equals negative x because we doubled a half plus 65. So the slope decreases 1,000 feet per minute. The y-intercept, that's going to be the same as above. So I've got my graph here, except I forgot to label height in thousands of feet. And then for C, I got y equals 5. But remember, that's in thousands of feet, so that's 5,000 feet. All right, so our last example here, example four, comparing linear functions. The earnings of dollars of a nighttime employee working X hours are represented by the linear function Y equals seven and five tenths X plus 30. So the table shows the earnings of a daytime employee. Which employee has the greatest hourly wage? So let me see, the nighttime employee y equals 7 and 5 tenths x plus 30. So let me see. My change here, so that's plus 1. From here to here, here to here, and here to here, that's plus 12 and 5 tenths. So remember, my daytime employee... change in y over change in x. What was my change in y? 12 and 5 tenths. What's my change in x? 1. So this employee makes $12.50 per hour. Now this one, that's my slope. So this employee makes $7.50 per hour. So which employee makes a higher hourly wage? That would be the daytime employee. So let's take a look here. It says write a linear function that relates the daytime employee's earnings to the number of hours worked. In the same coordinate plane, graph the linear functions that represents the earning of the two employees interpret the graphs. So this employee is not going to earn a bonus here. So theirs is y equals 12 and 5 tenths x. Now I could say plus zero because they don't have a bonus like this person. So I've got y equals 12 and 5 tenths x. Here my x value is time in hours and my earnings here are in dollars. So let's see, I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 here, 20, 40, 60, 80. And now let's graph these. So this one we're going to start out at 0, 0. And then let's see. So if I do I can come up with another point here. So let's do this. So let's see. Let's do four hours. So we've got y equals 12 and 5 tenths times 4. So y equals 50. So that's point 450. So I have 4, 50. And this right here is my daytime employee. I want to make sure I graph this nicely. So this is y equals 12 and 5 tenths x. That's my daytime. Now, let's see. My nighttime, my y-intercept here is 30. So I can do the same thing. I've got 
y equals 7 and 5 tenths times 4 plus 30. So y equals 7 and 5 tenths times 4 is 30 plus 30. So y equals 60. So at four hours, this person has $60. And then let's go ahead and graph this. And right about there. So this person is, and do a super great job there of graphing those buggers. So I have y equals 7 and 5 times x plus 30. So which one makes more? So I've got this one makes more per hour. And right about here is when. The daytime is going to overtake the nighttime. So the daytime employee is going to make more per hour and doesn't break even until six hours. So I could say they break even at six All right, on your own, number four, go ahead and hit pause. When you're done, come on back. All right, so my equation for employee A is y equals 15x plus 50. So manager B makes a higher hourly wage. And manager B is going to earn more money than manager A after five hours. Great job, everybody. Have a wonderful day.